I want to share this with you this morning. I want to talk to you about my house. I, uh, I got three children that many of you know. Uh, Jonathan has, has moved out of the house. He's, he's not in my house anymore. And Friday, Savannah left to go on vacation with uh, some friends of ours who uh, uh, go to a church over in Madison Heights. And she went camping with the Fink family. And it's quiet in her room. And as I'm in the house since Friday, it, I don't hear the chatter on her Snapchat. I don't hear her weep. I don't hear the Netflix. I don't hear all the giggles when she's posting something on Instagram or Facebook. In her father's house, it's quiet. And then my other son, Zachary, he left Friday as well going camping with the Mays family and John Tillman and, and them. And they're going to be gone for a week. And, and in his father's house, it's mighty quiet as well. As a matter of fact, it's definitely quiet because normally I hear him playing basketball, dribbling the ball outside, or I hear him playing guitar downstairs and I can hear him singing and it echoes throughout the house. I'll hear somebody he's admiring on YouTube that he's playing in another room somewhere. I hear it filling the house. This week it's been quiet. Mighty quiet in the Father's house. Tuesday, I came up here to sit right where Stephen's at and I talked to the Lord for the longest kind of time. And there was no one in here but me and the Lord. It was quiet in the Father's house. And as I sit there and talk to the Lord, and I understood just how, getting my mind wrapped around just how quiet it was in the Father's house. I'm thankful that when you come to church, you all come with the Spirit. Some's got a little bit more stronger spirit than others. Some got a little more reserved spirit, but we all bring some kind of spirit and this place comes alive on Sunday morning. When you come to the Father's house. But as exciting as it is here on Sunday morning, and it, it's pretty exciting on Sunday morning, most Sundays, most Sundays we leave here and it's just like, it's an adrenaline rush, right? And And this very building is creepy quiet without you. If you've ever been in here when it's just you, or you've been alone in this building, you will know just how still it is and how quiet it is. My children who are not in my house this week to go from having three children in your house to having no children in your house, it's quiet. It's quiet. Being in God's house is when He's no one here but you and Him, it's quiet. I want to look at what the Bible says about God's house. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Revelation 4. Once you get there, would you stand with me as we read God's Word this morning. I want you to listen carefully because there's a lot of a lot to be said about the Father's house. I'm looking at Revelations 4. Would you follow along with me as I read? After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as that it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. 
And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne, and he that set was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning through the throne, burning before the throne, which were the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the four beasts was like a lion, and the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast like a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. They were full of eyes within, and the rest, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him, that sit on the throne who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sit on the throne and worship him, worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Continue on through chapter 5. Look down at verse 11 for me, please. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing in every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such are as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I sing blessing and honor and glory and power be un unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty fell elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Father, this morning, we are so grateful that your house is being prepared for us at this time. And Lord, that even right now, there's worship in heaven. And Father, we thank you so much that you loved us enough to die for us so that we can come into your house here today, Lord, to worship you in spirit and truth. Move in our hearts right now, Father. Help us to see what you have us to see. Help us to know what you'd have us to know. And God, help us to line up behind your word. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Listen, you may be seated. Let me tell you a few things that's happening in heaven. There's going to be singing in heaven. You think we've had some singing here? There ain't no singing like it's going to be in heaven. It's going to be a joyous time in heaven. My kids. Kids can go down. <laughs> Feel up to it. Go ahead. You're going to stay. That's fine, too. Listen, if you are thinking that we've had some great singing here at Rock Pike, that is nothing. That is absolutely nothing compared to singing that is going to be coming when we get to heaven. Amen. You think people sound good here. This is nothing compared to what the heavenly choir is going to sound like. You think we're skillful in how we play instruments here? It's nothing compared to what it's going to be like when we get in the Father's house. That's right. Amen. Let me tell you something else that's going to be happening in the Father's house. It's going to be worship in the Father's house. We come in sometimes and we want to make sure everything's right to suit this man. But when we get to the Father's house, it's all, all will be about the Father, and there's going to be some worship. There's going to be some praise. There's going to be some honor, and there's going to be glory given to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, because He is worthy to be praised. Now, with that being said, there are a few things that is not going to be in heaven. Listen closely. There's a few things that's not going to be in heaven. One... There ain't going to be no more heartbreak in heaven. You ain't going to have to worry about your heart being broken. If your heart's been broken, you ain't going to have to worry about it. You know why? The Bible says I'll wipe away all tears. Yeah. You ain't going to have to worry about it. God is going to mend a broken heart. We ain't going to have to worry about leaning on, on alcohol or drugs 
or any other kind of dependency to mend that broken heart, God is going to wipe away all tears. And based on the authority of his word, there will be no broken hearts in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you another thing that ain't going to be in heaven. Sin ain't going to be in heaven. Sin ain't going to be in heaven. The Bible says the homosexuality disgusts God. That ain't going to be in heaven. But it don't stop there. The Bible says the adulterer ain't going to be in heaven. The fornicator, those having sex outside of marriage, ain't going to be in heaven. Ain't going to be no sin in heaven. Ain't going to be no pride in heaven. There ain't going to be no lust in heaven. There ain't going to be no liar in heaven. There ain't going to be no cheater in heaven. If you lie to improve your own circumstances, heaven, the Father's house, won't design for you. It wasn't constructed with you in mind. Why? Because it's the Father's house. And the Father says, if you want a, a room in my mansion, if you want a room in my house, then you've got to play by my rules. That's right. That's right. right. Father's house is going to be lacking one more thing. And that is anyone who don't want to be there. If you don't want to be in the Father's house, guess what? It wasn't built for you. Amen. How are you going to know? If, wait a minute, how can you say that heaven wasn't built for me when Jesus died for me? That's right. He died for you. And if you can't honor God in this temple, you won't do it in this temple, and you surely ain't going to do it in that temple. Right. So it gets back to this. Who's going to be in the Father's house? Jesus said, if you call on me, I'll in no wise cast you out. When God lives in this house, which is the temple, when God lives here, He ain't got to beg you to read His Word. He ain't got to beg you to obey His Word. All right. And He ain't got to ask you to come in and worship Him. You will want to read His Word. You will want to pray. And you will right. want to come in and worship Him. Right. And if you don't want to do it here, you won't do it here. Right. And if you can't do it here, you won't. the Father's house wasn't built for you. All right. My house this week is quiet because my children have all gone different ways. When we get to the Father's house, <laughs> we ain't got to worry about leaving the Father's presence. Yeah. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, now wrap your mind around that. Forever. See, when we want to go do something, we, we want to go on vacation, or we want to buy a new car, or we want to make our way in this life, listen, we find a way to do those things. Right. When God lives here, you want to serve Him. When He lives here, you want to read His Word. When He lives in this house, you want to pray. When He, when he, If you don't like coming to Bible study, the Father's house won't be built for you because if He don't live here, He ain't going to invite you there when you won't let Him in here. All right. This is the temple of God. And if God can't reside here, you ain't bringing it here. And then you can't certainly can't take it there. But for those of us who trust Christ as Savior and walk by faith, trust Him with our tithes, trust Him with our offerings, trust Him with our talent, trust Him and be obedient, recognize where the lines on the road are painted, and stay between those lines of the road, well then God says He honors those who trust Him as Savior. Because see, when we love Him, we don't have to be made to go to church. We don't have to be made to obey His commandments. When we know that He died for us, we want to serve Him. Nobody has to drag us. So the question this morning is this. Does God live here in this temple? Because if God doesn't reside in this house, you, can't, you won't come into this house ready to serve Him. And if you can't come in this house ready to serve Him, God didn't prepare heaven for you. The question for you this morning is what's going on in this house? As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. Let's pray.